cherished her grandmother because her cha her grandmother always, you know, doted on her and slept with her through her childhood, which I have grand memories of sleeping with my grandmother. And so I, I understood from a child's perspective how special that is. So she goes on to talk about that her grandmother had been raped when she was a teenager and that when she married, the husband would not permit the baby into the house. And I said, can you, can you begin to understand what a freezer of a childhood your mother must have grew up in with this resentment and this unresolved grief and all the other stuff that goes with it? Do you understand that your mother loved you to the best of your ability, regardless of how it did not fit your expectations? And I said, and the thing is, is that you have a grand opportunity to do some healing here. And you can be the mother that you always longed for your mother to be, to your daughter. And stop this now. But you cannot do it alone. This is a community situation. It requires friends like me who get in your face and tell you what they think. And it's the therapist who's going to shape and mold you. It's a church who's going to help you reach for a strength that is beyond what we can get in our human the everyday life. It takes all of that for us to heal. Because what we're doing is we're moving back into who we are. It's like we're in a labyrinth. And again, there's the exit sign. And that there are people in our lives as way showers who point the way for us and maybe take us by the shoulders and tell us, you always did the best you could. You did the best you could with the knowledge you had at the moment. Do not regret the past. It has brought you here. Like Betty said, I am grateful for everything. For <clears> everything, <throat> because I would not be who I am today if it was not for that. Do I have greater skills of handling my life? Of course. Am I going to fall flat on my nose uh, for an event or something that I don't, I'm not completely prepared for? Yes. But am I source? Is that it, do fish swim in the water? You know, we cannot escape who we are, but we can pretend, which does us absolutely no good. Why in the world would you put a tourniquet around your, around your leg because your ankle's hurting? You know, I mean, it just, but we do that all the time because we are caught up in this illusion. But I challenge all of you to step away from the illusion of what you think is going on, like Jesus told us. Do not get caught up in the illusion but reach for the source within you. Listen to the still voice that is always giving you comfort, always telling you that it's going to be okay, always giving you a way out. She sat there in my chair and she looked at me and she said, do you think I'm a martyr? And I said, well, you know, many years ago when I was sitting in an Al-Anon meeting, I had discovered that I was a martyr. And... Um, I remember in my shame and in my embarrassment, I looked at these people and I said, I'm a martyr. And they all looked at me. It was just beautiful. They all looked at me and they went. And it was just like, yeah, well, we felt the same when we discovered we were martyrs. And so I told her, I said, you know, you did the best you could. It's okay that you're a martyr. You'll, but the thing is, is that you had the courage to say that out loud to somebody like me, obviously, and I'm grateful to her for, she trusted me to be able to share that with her. And it was so cute, everyone, because she looked at me, and it was like watching the Grinch that stole Christmas, you know, when they, his little heart blooms two sizes larger, and her little eyes just went, just got huge and soft and loving. And I thought, this is what I do this work for. This is the opportunity to watch people's souls light up before my very eyes is why I do what I do. And why I stand behind this counter, this podium, and share with me, you my path. Because it doesn't get any better than that. But I'm still reading The Life and the Teachings of the Mess of the Far East. And I read the last couple pages of Volume 4, Volume four, and there was three sentences I'm just going to share with you real quick that just fits so beautifully here. Love is the great unifier in the consciousness, consciousness of man, 
And to keep oneself always in an attitude of love is to progress toward oneness. One need not try to love everybody, but he must eternally seek to keep his nature whole through the process of love, the increase of love. When one's nature expands in love, he will sooner or later find himself in a loving attitude toward all men. And in this attitude, he not only lifts himself, but all those around him into that same oneness. There is no divisions in an awakened sense of love. So it really, for me, answered this question that I have, that my greatest gift to my planet is healing, to an awakened sense of love, so that each and every one that comes around me is, is sparked to remember their own divinity. And as each one of us goes out enlightened, people see our light, they are inspired to heal. And that's how we're going to heal this planet. I am deeply grateful for this community for all.